Hello humans, my name is Kyo Overload and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I have an exciting update for you. Because in my last video, I presented a new AI tool called Life Portrait that allowed you to transfer the motion of a video onto an image portrait in one click, making deep fakes from a single image much, much easier. But at the end of the video, I told you that very soon, we might get an update where instead of using an image source, you could use a video instead, making video to video portrait animation in Instantly. Well, guess what? That update is finally here. Just upload the source video of a person with a neutral expression, then upload a driving video with motion, and then click animate. And in the end, you get something incredible like this. A video made from two videos, which is just insane. And it is so much fun to use, because the types of videos you can make with this is basically limitless. And it's really just so much fun. Now, if you want to install this, you can just watch my previous video on the subject, where I show how to install it manually, or if you are one of my Patreon supporters, you can just use the one-click installer that will install everything automatically, but if you already have Life Portrait installed and you don't want to reinstall it, you can simply download the updater file from the same Patreon post, then drag and drop it inside the Life Portrait folder, and then run the updater to update it to the latest version, so that in the end, when everything is updated, you can just relearn the launcher to start the new web UI version. And yes, the installation is still the same with ROMPOD, with the manual method or the one-click installer, just open the public URL to be able to use the web UI. Okay, so now that we have Life Portrait installed, how do we actually use this newest version? Well, once again, it is very, very simple. Now, right here, you will see that now, instead of simply having a source image, you have two different tabs. Source image, where you can simply transform an image into a video, and a second tab called source video. And this is the new addition to the web UI. This is where you input a source video instead of a source image. So once again, it is very, very easy to use. Just upload the source video. I'm gonna use some of the examples right here. Now make sure that the person's face is neutral, or at least it will be easier if it is. Then here you're gonna upload your driving video. That's the video that's gonna be used for the motion. And here, depending if the video is a square or not, you might need to enable the do crop option. So like here, for example, since our video is a rectangle, it's a 16 by 9 ratio, and it's not a square, we need to enable this option right here. And same thing with our driving video. Since this is not a square, we need to enable this option. So then, if you scroll down, the only option that you need to pay attention to is the relative and rotation. Now basically what this option does is that if you leave it by default and you don't check it, if you click animate, when you play the final video you will see that the head does not move, it is in the same exact position as the original video, but if you actually activate this option and then click animate again, you will see now that if you play the video, the person is actually looking at the camera, is actually looking at the viewer in accordance to basically the driving video. But of course, the bigger the movement in the driving video, the bigger the effect will be in the final video. So personally, I would suggest basically always leaving this on because this adds way more movement to the final video, which makes it even more realistic. But you can of course leave it off by default if you want to have a very specific feel for the video. Now, one thing that you absolutely need to be careful of when you use two videos together is to make sure that each and every video has the same frame rate. Now, you will see here that when you actually start the animation process, process, it will actually give you the FPS for each video. Now, in my case, each video is 30 FPS. It is kind of like the standard frame per second for a normal video, but sometimes some videos might be 24 FPS or 60 FPS, and if the frames per second does not match, you might get some very weird results. So like, for example, if I upload the same video, but this time it is a 60 FPS video instead of 30, if I click animate, if now I play the final video, you will see that, well, the final video is like almost slowed down to be able to basically make up for the fact that this is not the same amount of frame per second. And you of course get the opposite effect if you upload a 60fps source video with a 30fps driving video, where you will see that the final video is accelerated instead of being slowed down. So yeah, basically make sure that the FPS for both video is the same. And it doesn't matter if it is both 60fps or 30fps, the end result will always be great. And if you want to know how to make 
make sure that every video has the same frame per second. You can open your video editor, like for example, I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve, which is probably one of the best free video editor available right now. And here, for example, you have an untitled project that you can just right click, click on project settings. And here on the timeline frame rate, make sure that you choose the frame rate that you want to use, either 30, 24 or 60 FPS and just select it, click on save, then open the project. And once you drag and drop your clip into the media pool, it will ask you if you want to change the project frame rate and here you will simply choose don't change so that it stays at the frame rate that you chosen previously and then from there simply put your clip in the timeline put your before with i and then o for the end then click the export icon choose the render quality the file name the location then click add to render queue and then render all and that's it we went from a 60 fps clip to a 30 fps clip and if you want to change the voice of a person to something else so like for example we have this original audio with this new video. Weeks after President Biden's disastrous debate performance, he today faced the world's media in an appearance labelled Make or Break. That is the same voice as the drawing video right here. Just like I showed you in my previous video, you can use RVC to change the voice to anything you want. Once again, just choose a custom RVC model, just play a little bit with the transpose value, put the path of the audio file, and then click convert. And in the end, you should get a new audio file in a completely different voice that you can then download, then put the audio clip on your timeline, and then mute the track of the audio that you want to use. So this is the before. Two weeks after President Biden's disastrous debate performance, he today faced the world's media in an appearance labeled make or break. And this is the after. Two weeks after President Biden's disastrous debate performance, he today faced the world's media in an appearance labeled make or break for his election campaign. And yeah, there you go. Now you can just export the video and then you are done. Two weeks after President Biden's disastrous debate performance. Simple as that. So yeah, there you go. This was the new update to Live Portrait, an absolutely fantastic update that will make video creation even better than before. Also, if you have any issues whatsoever, do not forget that I provide priority support on Patreon, so just send me a DM and I will try to answer your question as soon as possible. So definitely try this out yourself and have some fun. And there we are with folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you also so much to my Patreon supporters for supporting my videos, you guys are absolutely awesome. You people are the reason why I'm able to make these videos so thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.